everyone, and welcome to the first edition of Instant Replay for the 2014 season, where I give you my take on the most controversial calls of the weekend. I'm Simon Borg. It was an interesting start to the season, with replacement referees taking control of the proceedings because of a lockout, which meant the regular officials weren't around. But the replacements were not out of place. How do we know? Easy. They're not the talking points coming out of the weekend. But it doesn't mean they didn't leave us with plenty to chew on. Let's take a closer look beginning at RFK Stadium, where Andres Pfefferkorn, yes, Andres Pfefferkorn, presided over the affair. Tough to argue with the 26 minute penalty kick for the crew. We only have a super wide shot of it, but it looks like Perry Kitchen gets two arms on Michael Parkhurst, impeding him from chasing down a ball in the box. And the referee is in perfect position to see it. Later in the first half, a play that might be one for the disciplinary committee. Here again, we don't have the best of looks, it's a wide shot, but we can see DC forward Eddie Johnson raising his forearm to make contact with crew left back Waylon Francis well after the pass left his feet. It may have been retaliation for what occurred moments before when this Francis challenge left EJ shaken up a bit after their knees collided. There were no cards issued for either of these plays, but I would have punished DJ with at least a yellow for reckless conduct. So the ref was lenient there, as he was, in my opinion, in the 67th minute. Look at this challenge by DC's Lewis Neal. Lunging in with his cleat exposed near the knee of Will Trapp. No contact was made, but I call that endangering the safety of your opponent, and that offense is punishable by a red card. Only a yellow was shown here by the referee. Two other cardable offenses that went unpunished. Christian Fernandez's 75th minute stomp on Hector Jimenez, which I call violent conduct, and the 79th minute dive by Luis Silva. No cards issued for either of these plays. Next, we head to BBVA Compass Stadium and two penalty kick claims to look at for the Houston Dynamo. First, in the 58th minute, Ricardo Clark gets the stiff arm from Jose Gonzalez, and then five minutes later, Darius Barnes runs into Will Bruin's back. Referee Jorge Luna Hernandez didn't call either one. Staying in Texas, we head to Frisco, and some questions on the opening goal for FC Dallas. The ball is pinging around the top of the box and finally gets to Blas Perez, who uses his right arm to deflect the ball in the direction of Fabian Castillo. Dallas scored on the play, but in my opinion, the handball should have been called. The second Dallas goal came on a penalty kick, whistled by referee Ramon Hernandez. Impact fans were irate because they say Mauro Diaz tripped himself up. But similar to the crew penalty kick we looked at earlier, Brovsky puts his arm on the player in the box, and you're just asking for it. By contrast, earlier in the match, Matt Hedges did the same to Montreal's Andrew Wenger, except the American forward didn't go down, and there wasn't even a whisper for a PK. I thought there were two other penalty kicks for Dallas that were not called. This handball whistled on Hernan Bernardello looks to have happened right on the edge of the box, which would make it a penalty kick. But that's a bang bang call and a hard one for the ref. And then in the 51st minute, I thought Fabian Castillo beats rookie Eric Miller fair and square to the ball and gets scissored down. But the referee whistles a foul the other way. Moving to StubHub Center for Saturday night's LA vs RSL, where the key play was the 76th minute goal scored by Luke Mulholland, which was flagged by assistant referee Jose Da Silva for what we believe is a presumed offside. But we don't see it. Not on the first pass by Alvaro Saborio, and not on the shot by Joao Plata. For me, the goal should have stood. Da Silva got it right in the 80th minute on the game winner by Joao Plata. There's no offside on the pass by Kyle Beckerman, and Alvaro Saborio doesn't touch the ball on the path to Plata. Good eye by the assistant referee to keep his flag down. Next, the stoppage time penalty awarded to the Galaxy. Real Salt Lake's Tony Beltran definitely runs into the back of Galaxy forward Rob Friend just as he's about to jump up to head the ball. I think it was a good call by referee Javier Santos and even a better save by goalkeeper Nick Romando. RSL hold on to win 1-0. Back to Stop Hub Center for the Sunday matinee between Chivas USA and the Chicago Fire. The home team had a penalty kick in this one. Gonzalo Segares clearly grabs a hold of Eric El Cupo Torres, and I say Segares should have also been sent off for denial of a clear goal scoring opportunity. But I think referee William Anderson could have whistled two other spot kicks for the GOATs. Segares was also guilty of a handball in the 75th minute, which looked like it happened inside the box to me. The ref spotted it outside. The other instance came in the 53rd minute. Header by Augustin Pelletieri and Dilly Duca clears it off the line with his right arm. That's a penalty and a red card for me. And Duca was graced again in the 61st minute for this tackle on Mauro Rosales, which to me endangers the safety of his opponent, and that's punishable with an ejection. One more play to look at from this game. Great work by assistant referee Jose Da Silva on the fire's first goal by Benji Hoya. Yep, that's the same Jose Da Silva who ran the line for the LARSL match the night before. We point him out here because there were two real close calls to make on that Hoya goal. First, on the touch by Quincy Ameriqua to Alex. You see the Chivas defender keeping Alex on. And then on the cross by Alex, you see that Hoya is even with the line of the ball. Tough calls, but Da Silva nailed it. 
Now, we head up the west coast to Seattle, where the replacement referee in this case was Alan Kelly, who just in October was officiating UEFA Champions League matches. He's actually employed by Pro, the assistant training manager, and he received rave reviews after this one. But he did face a big decision early on. In the 15th minute, Brad Evans gains position in the box on CJ Sapong, who hits the deck. But on his way down, he grabs Evans' jersey and prevents him from getting to the ball. Looks like a penalty to me, but Kelly, who was correctly positioned at the far post on the original corner kick, could have never seen it. He motions for the goal kick. More controversy in the 19th minute, when Seattle fans wanted a second yellow on Arlien Kalen for this foul, but I agree with Kelly here. It's a fair challenge by Kalen to stop a pass. I don't think it's a foul to halt a promising attack, which would have warranted a second yellow. Good no card there. The roles were reversed in the 59th minute. This time it's Seattle's Ozzy Alonso who was carrying a yellow, and he encroaches on a free kick. That's delaying the restart of play, and by the book, it should have been punished with a second caution. Two offside calls to highlight in this one. Assistant Kyle Longville raises his flag in the 23rd minute, but the freeze frame actually shows us that Seattle's Kenny Cooper was in line with Cullen on the pass. But the flag comes up late, and by the time Kelly is ready to whistle for the offside, the ball turns over to Sporting's goalkeeper, and the ref opts to give the advantage. The other assistant referee in this game got his big call right in the 84th minute. Dimitar Chararav flags Obafemi Martins for offside on this clever pass by Clint Dempsey. Good eye, ref. Our last stop comes in Vancouver, and in the 31st minute, the Red Bulls defender Armando gets a yellow card for catching Darren Maddox with a high leg on this follow-through. I would have opted for a red card for <coughs> endangering the safety of his opponent. These two got into it again in the 38th minute, and some wanted a second yellow on Armando for stopping Maddox racing in on goal. But I agree with referee Abio Colaja here. It's a foul on Maddox. A good defensive play by Armando, and Maddox sticks his leg in to poke it away and fouls Armando in the process. Good call. Next, the penalty kick incident which led to Vancouver's opening goal. Richard Eckersley is the Red Bulls player called for the handball infraction in the box and frankly, it's a no-brainer. Look at how he raises his arms. The call is actually signaled by far-side assistant Eric Wiesbrod and Okolaja obliges. Good teamwork there. But I also would have issued a yellow to Eckersley. He didn't get a card. And we leave you with this rare instance from BC Place. In first half stoppage time, David Osted's punt hits the massive video screen which hangs down above the middle of the field. How does Okolaja resolve this one? Simple, a drop ball. For our editor John Benton, I'm Simon Borg. See you next time.